Hey everybody, here is a time-lapse video of the brick oven I built just the past few weeks. It took me about a month to do in total. And on uh, so day one, marked out the area where I wanted to pour the concrete slab and basically just started digging a hole. Um, it's about six or seven inches deep. Um, that's how about how thick the concrete will be after I put the two inches of stone in there. Um, this is the next day. I didn't spend much time on day one, but I'm just framing out where the concrete will be poured. And uh, once this is framed out, I put, I think I used about six bags of rocked, crushed rock in the bottom of it. And then I laid some, some mesh wire down, and in the top right corner I'm cutting the rebar to fit in there. Once it's cut, then I started to pour after I raised the rebar up a couple inches so that it's got concrete on the bottom and the top. This is one of the only steps where my wife Carly was there to, <clears throat> was there to help me. Um, I think we mixed probably around 20, 25 to 30 bags of concrete here. The hardest part of this was figuring out where the low spots were and filling it in and then getting it nice and level. The following day we just let it harden and we put our initials in the corner but then realized that the cinder blocks are going to cover it. So here I'm laying out the cinder block base for the dome and once I have the base laid out I cut a whole bunch of rebar and in every other hole I place the rebar down basically all the way down inside of it in preparation for the cement that's going to go in. This is where I took some angle iron, made a bridge from side to side, and then cut the block to fit in the angle iron. And I'm mixing the concrete here and uh, filling each, uh, filling every other hole with concrete to make the stand nice and sturdy. I went through another 20 bags of cement here. I definitely wouldn't have been able to do this job without that cement mixer. It made, made mixing the cement real easy. Um, so now I'm trying to fit this piece of plywood in. You can see me crawling under there putting support beams in. Um, I'm building the top part where the dome will sit and it's a three inch cement slab that has to sit on top of the stand. So I'm building the frame where the cement will be poured and pretty much doing the same thing I did on the bottom. Putting the rebar in there, raising it up a little and then doing the cement all over again. And I went through oh, a good 15 to 20 bags of 80 pound cement again on this day. And I believe this is probably the last day that I went through cement, but it's definitely a workout. This, this time was a little easier because it was up, up off the ground. And I added a lot of extra water that I didn't need, so it took a little bit longer to dry. So this is the first step of the dome, and it's a, like a ceramic... Um, insulating board that is placed down right on top of the cement and this is where the brick floor lays. The first thing I did was put some sand down so that I could level out the bricks and then I made my way around the circle of the dome cutting the bricks to match the curvature of the ceramic board. I had to get a diamond blade for my, my chop saw. And then I'm creating the floor for the entryway there. The next day, day 10, um, I believe this is where I was building the archway. So I had to build two pieces of wood that kind of gave me the shape of the arch so that I could place the, the bricks 
all the way around. You can see I'm dry fitting them there just to make sure that I got the spacing right. Once I got the spacing right, then I went back and added mortar and completed the arch. This was probably one of the easier steps in the brick lane. And then once the, the archway was done, I took full bricks and laid them on end. <laughs> this is where I decided to bring the fan out because it was it was in the 90s almost every day I was out there. Fan definitely definitely helped. Oh, and I built the chimney right there too. There's the opening for the chimney. And you can also see right there I'm laying the bricks on end to start the dome. There's a little bit better, better angle. I think this is the point when it, uh, the night before it had rained and got water into my GoPro case and the uh, water is starting to fog up the, the case. So it's kind of foggy here, but it'll change here in a minute. Um, so yeah, I just worked my way around, putting a little bit of an angle on each brick so that they sat flush against the, the circled wall. And I had to cut one right there, a little skinnier so that it would uh, fit. Now this is a tool called the indispensable tool. It's an idea that people use online to make sure that the curvature of the dome is correct all the way around, but not only around, but as it, as you work your way up the wall, it keeps the correct distance for the bricks. And without that tool, I don't think I would have done this um, nearly as easily as I did. I'm just working my way around. So if, after that first ring, I had to cut every brick in half. And I believe here, there were a few points when I was doing this that it was pouring out. So I'm glad I had the tent because this is the day that it was definitely lightning all around me. So it's pretty slow moving when you get to this point, putting the bricks in there one by one. You have to make sure you have enough mortar underneath of the brick. And then once you set the brick, you have to make sure that you get mortar down in the crack too because the heat will go in between the bricks and that's the fastest way for the heat to get out. So yeah, this, this part of the video is going to be kind of boring. Um, as I get closer and closer um, to the chimney, the ring of bricks that go around will stop. And in order to keep going, I have to kind of float a bridge of bricks. And there'll be an angle where you'll be able to see. Okay, so here I'm just cutting the bricks so that they fit into that little space there a little better. And um, a lot of mortar was used because I didn't get the bricks cut quite where they needed to be. Um, and you can start to see that the ring is... a is going to kind of collide with the chimney area. So in order for me to continue, what I'll have to do is create a bridge that goes along the inside. And that was probably the hardest part. You'll see it, I think, on, on this go around. And I believe that's where I start using the sticks to hold the bricks up after I move. Because you get to a point where the bricks, after you go to the next one, the brick wants to kind of slide toward the center. And it doesn't go very far, but it's enough to kind of mess you up and mess up the next step. So here's the part where I'm building the bridge. I had to get in there because I had to make some pretty, pretty intricate cuts to get the angles right. And... It was a tight squeeze, but you can see there's a bridge in there now where I can start to lay bricks on top of. And I had to cut a lot of these sticks, and each level 
of bricks that I did, the sticks had to get longer and longer. So I actually had to go purchase a piece of plywood so that I had sticks that would be long enough because I was just using scrap wood for for the plywood sticks. <clears throat> At that point right there, I had to make some weird shaped bricks to kind of fit around the chimney but also fit on top of that bridge. And after that level, once that bridge was made, I was basically just making full full rotations, full circle circles on the uh, on the brick layers, just working my way around, starting to close in on the on the top. And this is this is about where I could see the the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I think I spent a good week laying bricks on this dome it took it took a long time um, and you can see all the sticks on the inside there holding up the bricks and each level had its own small brick that I had to fit in place and uh, that was a little challenging each time around they don't fit perfect when you get to the end I think I go around one more time but here you can see I'm cutting small bricks I think I'm doing one third brick and making my way around still using the sticks and at this point the bricks are almost completely vertical so I had to reach inside um, I might have went around one more time before I reached inside actually I think I got about halfway on this one and realized I wasn't going to be able to get my arm in there if I kept going so I got in there and I pulled that tool out and then I did one of I just did them one by one and that's the final brick there. Once I had it in place, I put a ton of mortar in there and just let it sit in there. Um, there's a curing fire, so I put that in there to kind of cure the the oven. The oven takes um, a good four or five good curing fires before you can really get it up to high temperature. And at this point, I had put a two-inch insulating um, fiberglass mat over the whole thing, covered it with chicken wire, and I'm covering it with a refractory mortar, which is kind of a heat barrier, so that any heat that does go through the brick and through that insulating blanket is stopped by the outside layer of refractory mortar. Now, I don't have any video of the, the stucco that was put on or the painting that we did afterwards, but here are a couple pictures of the stucco the paint, and um, a picture or two of the first pizzas that we made in the oven. Uh, hope you enjoyed this, and thanks for watching.